Hi guys, Catfives9 here, and today, as you can tell from the title of the video, I'm going to be explaining the Armor 3 faction of the FIA, FIA, or the Freedom and Independence Army as it's called in some cases. It is a, mostly a blue four faction of the Armor 3 universe. It has got cells with an Altus and Stratus, which are the two main islands within the Armor 3 universe. Add games and campaigns as East Wind and Boot Camp campaigns. But the FIA have also made features in the Tac Ops DLC, which is a great DLC that explains a bit more into the FIA during the Civil War. The years of 20... hold up. <laughs> I don't remember these dates off by heart, you'd go crazy if you were to. Yeah, during 20... Uh, 2026 and 2030 were the years of the Alton Civil War, which was between Alton Loyalists and Alton Rebels, as they are called. The Rebels were led by Colonel Akinteros himself and a couple of other willing officers. It started off as a coup, and then it spread into something major. It's a bit like what they say, what affects... The military affects the rest of the country, so... It sparked the Civil War. Many farmers and... Civilians ran towards the altered loyalists because the loyalists were actually in charge of the military in the country before the coup. So they fled to the FIA because the loyalists then changed their name into the FIA, which the loyalists were supported by CTRG, and that's about it. <laughs> They did get some training from CSAT Viper teams, but the Viper teams more or less went to trade on the, the Rebels for some reason. They wanted to cause chaos. I guess they wanted to change the status quo as well to their favor. So they mainly chose the, the Rebels to help out. And during the Civil War, fear was at its peak. At the first few years of the Civil War, the Loyalists were winning. But then other support came through from CSAT and NATO of the, the Rebels. Then the Rebels made themselves legitimate by calling themselves the Altus Armed Forces. Which then provided NATO and CSAT the clearance to help out clean up the country beside this legitimate country. Which was a bad thing for the FIA. But it did give the ability for many of the AEF higher ranks and officers to defect because of international support. Seeming that closer to the end of the Civil War CSAT had a really big presence, and NATO. I guess they weren't very happy about it, so they switched over. A majority of the higher ranks within the FIA or the Loyalists were indeed of the Altus Armed Forces descent, so. And they also used equipment from CSAT and the AEF. And during the Civil War, it's very bloody, they lost a lot of men. And during the time of the East Wing campaign, which was 2035, they were really a guerrilla force. It wasn't a civil war. The civil war ended with the signing of a peace treaty, which is the Jerusalem Peace Treaty. Who knows why they called it Jerusalem, but... That sort of made the AEF into what it was. But the aftermath sort of saw the FIA's defeat or losing. So many of the FIA just gave up, became civilians, or even joined the AEF. And those who still were willing to dream on just 
we're a guerrilla force that could really do much. And then it goes to 2035, where they would lose any battle that they went head to head with either the AF or CSAT, and they had to choose their battles wisely and strategically and carefully, of course, because they would lose if they were caught off guard or if the forces that they were attacking were able to get some reinforcements in. And now that's just a little backstory on the the FIA for the moment. And during the Civil War, no CTRG members lost their lives, thankfully. Well, not thankfully, you know. CTRG did have their positives and negatives, but I was sort of for them. Now, the FIA had lots of characters within the story of the East Wind and Tac Ops. I reckon the main guy on campus was Coast, uh, Kostos Stavros. He was part of the a cell a bit north of the Altus Coast or whatever. It was north, that cell. He was the leader of the cell. He provided a lot of information and leadership skills to Corporal Carey, which his flash was the guy that you play within the East Wing campaign. And we don't really know if he lost his life during the NATO invasion, but I'd say that he is deceased in the AAC airfield which is in the middle of Altus and he was also a former AAF uh, soldier we don't know if he was former AAF officer or soldier so I was going to say soldier and the new well the new president of the Altus is Nikos Panagopoulos, I think that's what it was, Nico. But I can't spell the last name right. Well, say last name, I mean. But he was former FIA, because this is after the war. This is after the guerrilla warfare. He became a Prime Minister of the Republic of Altus and Stratus. So, this guy, he was a key link in many supply operations and arming of the, his troops and all that sort of stuff, but he also gave the FIA cell that Carey, Corporal Carey was in the will to fight again. And yet Corporal Carey and Miller's team were able to rescue him. And then he went on to basically give the FIA a fighting chance against the Altasar forces and CSAT during the NATO invasion of 2035. And that was also uh, defected and sympathetic AAF officer known as Orestes. It was a code name. We don't really know his actual name, but you hear Orestes you know what I'm talking about. He was a former AAF officer. He served in many missions and he also served the whereabouts of Nico Patakopoulos to the to Kostas Stavro. Which it was pretty key link. You got to kill a few CSAT soldiers through that man. <laughs> but he was very sneaky. He didn't want to step over because he knew if he stepped over, he would get caught and arrested for supporting the FIA. And those are just all the the main characters when the, within the FIA. That's not including NATO troops that joined the FIA after the Stratus blue on four, no, the blue on green incident. And not including the CTRG members that supported them throughout the Civil War and after the Civil War. The FIA had multiple 
stashes and forms of equipment. They had multiple boats, APCs, cars, soldiers, armor. Before, well, during the Civil War and before the Civil War, but after the Civil War, they were really short on APCs, vehicles, and supplies, as you'd think, of a guerrilla force. And being five years after the Civil War ended, multiple multiple strings would be cut and they were, the Altus armed forces would probably maintain or tighten the grip around the guerrillas so they were really short on supplies now they lost all their APCs after the Civil War but they originally got the APCs from the Brits the Brits I think transported them in so once the Brits couldn't help out their friends in the FIA anymore they decided to let go of the APC so I guess they've got no more APCs in that cell that was in the east wind but I would highly I think there's a big chance that they would have no more APCs. They probably would have all been destroyed because they're so hard to hide and a pre pro target. But they also have mortars. Now, mortars is a pre available piece of military equipment, which would be hard to get since not every soldier in the AF carries one. And. They can be used to the FIA's advantage quite well since they can hit a target with a mortar and they would have no idea where the mortar is. It could be on the uh, could be on the other side of the island or it could be just on the hill next to you. Who knows <coughs> where the mortar would come from. So that's from the mortars. They also had boats, assault boats, but they are very rarely used because they had no armor and they're really only used for reconnaissance, recon and it's probably surprise assaults but I've never really seen them used otherwise and once again only a few cells would have them I'm pretty sure not every cell would have a boat stash somewhere now the vehicles, the cars now, most of the cars that the FIA used were former civilian cars or an FIA soldier's car that they just wanted to paint up like a guerrilla vehicle and sell it to them. <laughs> but all the vehicles that they owned had a camouflage around them. So the AEF wouldn't start pulling over or harassing civilians because they'll know that the difference between a civilian vehicle and an FIA vehicle. It was also for camouflage. Since most of the FIA cells are mainly stationed in wood areas and very covered areas, I'm pretty sure that painting them in camouflage would make them pretty much invisible to a nearby jet or helicopter. And speaking of helicopters and jets, they do not have helicopters and jets. I think it's very rare or impossible, or not existent, I should say, that they had helicopters after the Civil War. I don't reckon that's the case. Because as a guerrilla force, you don't have access, as I said, I think before, to jets and all that new age technology and the forces, uh, not the forces, uh, and troops to repel any nearby forces. So, downside to them, but they've got an advantage that they have got stashes throughout, throughout Altus and Stratus that they can just hide their clothes and weapons out of stash and then blend in with the civilian infrastructure and population which is a good tactic for them 
many guerrilla groups nowadays use that exact same tactic to blend in within the civilian population after making an assault. Sadly, multiple terror groups use that to their advantage as well, <laughs> as we've seen in current times. But the, uh, the Armour 3 did pretty well with that. And multiple of the FIA soldiers still wear a little bit of that AEF um, pass job. Some would wear the AEF camouflage pants, some would wear the AEF camouflage top, and some of them even wore a full AEF uniform or just body armour and blended in with the AEF to try and get close to CSAT or something and then strike a strategic, uh, a strategic assault on CSAT or NATO. And they don't care who they killed really. CSAT, AF, NATO, it was all the same to them. Even though CTRG sort of wanted the FIA to kill more CSAT since they're on the lookout for the, the East Wind device, which, uh, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen my other video, it creates earthquakes, and that was Captain Miller's main task, was to lead his team in and find the earthquake device, the East Wind device. But we're not too sure if that was his objective the whole time, because we saw him within uh, the TAC Ops DLC, one of the operations during the Civil War. So we're not too sure if CSAT had the Eastman device before or during the Civil War, but Captain was there during the Civil War. Yeah. Today is going to be a short episode, I can tell you that. <laughs> well, short, um an explanation because the FIA really doesn't have much to talk about that camouflage and equipment standard you know nothing too special I got support from the CTRG they hide within the civilian population and do reconnaissance all that they barely have suppressors they don't even have night vision most of the time or body armor I should say they actually most of the time don't have body armor. When every other faction, they've got body armor uh, available to them. So, I hate to be the FIA, but the FIA is the weak, well, CTLG is the weakest group, but I'd say the FIA has got the least amount of influence. In the whole Armour 3 universe in the East Wing campaign, boot camp cam, a uh, boot camp campaign, and the TAC Ops campaigns, and also uh, Minotaur, that Minotaur campaign, that's Beast campaign. But I'd really like to see an expansion on this, like see them have a helicopter and destroy some CSAT stuff or them have a secret spec, uh, spec op operation alongside Captain Miller, uh, Captain, was it Captain Miller? Yeah, yeah, Captain Miller and Lieutenant James. You know, they could have done a lot with this and they did quite a good job of this. Having them just airbush a few trucks and during their civil war blow a lot of stuff up, use mortars and covert and overt operations to their advantage. It's, it was a good touch that they made because it feels very similar to the to today. The more I talk about it, the more I think. Did the makers of Varma Bohemia in Interactive base this off, uh, base the Armour 3 campaigns off of the real life Afghanistan of having 
Russia as CSAT, America as NATO, you know, nothing's changed there, as the Afghan National Army as the AF, and as the Taliban as the FIA. That definitely makes sense. Because the only reason the Taliban is fighting in Afghanistan is because of NATO and Russia and all that. And also against the ANA. So, could be links between that. They probably did it so links to that in real life. It is. Just to... Just think about it. And that is... I think the only faction that I would do, well, the only faction that is left, so, I could do, I'm looking through the, all the factions as you might hear, don't see so, I could do IDAP, IDAP is going to be extremely short video, <laughs> but we'll see in the future, Cat 5 is 9 out, hope you enjoyed.